Hey kids, welcome to lesson four, controlling memory with variables, number nine. Other ways to assign values to variables. This is actually going to be a very fun lesson here. In fact, we're gonna make our first little game in JavaScript. And this was actually one of the first programs I wrote way, 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 way back when I was first learning to code. So let's see what we're gonna to do today. Programs become much more interesting when the values and variables change while the program is running. We can also assign to a variable the value returned by a function. For example, the variable sum value equals random number somewhere between zero and 100. And from other lessons, I know random number just literally picks a random number between the two numbers that you set. Because the random number function evaluates to a number, it means we can treat it as though it were a number. So if you remember back to the last lesson, I said that the variables really had to be numbers to add them. Otherwise they had to be math-like. Well, this is what I meant by math-like, random numbers. We've used it before by just plugging it into some functions that needed a number as a parameter like move forward random number 25 by 50. Because the random number function generates a new and different number each time you call it, one thing we could not do before we had variables was generate a random number and then use that number for two different things in a program. Now we can. How exciting is that? We have a do this. Write a program that simulates the rolling of dice and reports their individual values as well as the sum. The program should generate two random numbers between one and six and store its result in its own variable, display the individual value of the two dice, display the sum of the two dice, see right, and every time you run the program, you should get a result that is a little different. Of course, we're rolling dice, so it should always be random. We've given you some starting code that shows what to do for the first die. The rest of the code is up to you. When you're done, the output in the app display should look like what's above. So right now, if we hit run, we should see a rolling dice. You rolled a five, a two, and you get a total there. So let's make our die rolling game. Let's take a look at our code first. So right now we have right rolling dice. We have a variable die one, which is a random number between one and six. And we want to write, you rolled a number, and then we have a string here with a plus die one. So up here, when I hit run, it should say rolling dice, you rolled a, and then give me a number. Let's see what happens. Rolling dice, you rolled a two. Well, let's go ahead and comment this out. This is die one, just so we know what to look for. Let's do die two. And we can do a lot like what we see above. So we're going to make a variable and we're gonna call this die two. We want this to pick a random number and look how that just populates up so we can do it. And the random numbers, I went between one and six. Dice only has one through six numbers because it only has six sides. Don't forget your semicolon. We want to write you rolled a colon and then and then we want our quotation mark right there and then we want a string plus die two semicolon one thing i just want to bring your attention to they are linking right there there's right next to the quotation mark i leave a space it will act exactly the same way because the string is outside the quotation marks, it will not give a space, just something to be aware of. When I hit reset run, I should get a you rolled a twice and two random numbers. Let's see what happens. Roll the five and a five. Ooh, look at me, I get to roll again. One and a two. That's fun, but we still need to know the total, even though I am awesome at math here and I can get those real quick numbers like one plus two. Maybe sometimes you need something to add up for you. So let's go ahead and write that part. Same thing, I'm gonna comment it out. I want this to be the sum. So I think I am going to have a variable called sum, and that is going to be equal to die one 
plus die two. So our variable sum is going to be die one plus die two, semicolon. And then we want to write for a total of colon, quotation mark, oops, it didn't start with one, and it always tries to put two in, so you have to delete the second one. There we go. And then I want to do a plus sum, because I want to link whatever this number is, die one plus die two, semicolon. So at this point, when I hit reset run, it should write rolling dice. Die one is a random number between one and six. It will write you rolled A and just some random number there. Die two, do the same thing, a random number between one and six. It will write you rolled A and a random number there. And then we have another one, sum. The variable sum is die one plus die two. Ooh, should have a space in there. Then I want to write for a total of and then plus sum the string, which is the two parts here added together. Let's go ahead and see if this works. Roll dice, you rolled a two, you rolled a five for a total of seven. Two plus five is seven. So that works there. Let's try it again just to make sure. Three plus one is four. It's doing everything I want it to. So that's awesome. Looks pretty good. We made a fun little game and uh, get to learn a little something in the process. I think that's everything code.org wanted from us. Let's go ahead and see if they want anything else. Nope. Good job, kids. I'll see you on the next lesson.